What do Nigerians expect from you as acting CJN of Nigeria? Uh, what Nigerians expect from me is to comply, preserve, and abide and protect the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And so be it. That is what I will do, essentially, with the cooperation of my brother, justices of the Supreme Court, we shall not fail Nigerians. May we quickly reiterate our demand, which are made in the interests of unity, inclusion, and sustainability for our national ethos. As number one, sack, arrest, and prosecute Professor Yakub Maro. My people, who now welcome back again to BOD TV board. I don't know, see the very first video I feel play give now. The Chief Justice of Nigeria, Ari Wola, I put it the column. Mm. He don't forget saying he don't make that video long time ago when he talk say he go he go go by the people Nigeria they look him I make man don't feel lost now only in one I remain now the man no say anything do kata 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 everywhere go scatter but my people eh I like the way people came out no violence but peaceful demonstration and when he can shock me past now those women where he put clutch away i was literally crying i don't know if he showed the video because of the guidelines for you but nevertheless my people eh see eh, this matter now it don't pass be careful not be so they plan a more they be plan and say if this whole thing be like this people go protect or come they violent but they surprise people don't do that we, they, they're shocked them in fact they're shocked I like they don't believe See, people go come out in a very calm and peaceful manner. Because they, they don't already plan talks with for put among the good people. We be see they go make the whole thing day and uh, uh, scatter, scatter. But at the end of the day, the thing not turn out to how they plan. Them. That's why they can't throw words at Igbo. Can't they, when they, you know, they, when they fight against them. Because they don't already plan all these things down. They you not know, turn the way they expected it to be. My people again on that video one play give una na 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 that one name eh, it is very important. Mona wait oh hmm. 
this video now be the main the coco why they talk say they no fee swear tinibo in because all the things we don't do in the past all in yash it don't open finally i'm not sure say if you recover for this one i will play this video for namukuna listen where we this video very important the drug story is one and then the certificates and perjury story is a different one which came out this week now that story is based on the deposition the INEC ec9 deposition uh, the declaration that uh, uh bulletin was submitted to the independent national electoral commission bear in mind that this is a sworn statement it's an affidavit so basically if you lie on this statement you are committing perjury which is a criminal offense now on this statement the date of birth that he gave the uh the uh university degree certificate that he submitted the nationality or the lack of nationality that he claimed all these have been proven to be false how have they proven to be false so um, a lawyer who is uh, who is who is currently in court with Tinubu, he filed a criminal complaint against Tinubu by the name of uh, Mike Enahoro Eba. If you remember at the outset when I said that INEC didn't want to release Tinubu's EC9 form, and this lawyer went to court with INEC, and INEC was then compelled to release this form. After getting hold of this, of this form and seeing what was written on it, this lawyer then contacted his colleagues uh, in Chicago, a law firm called Leahy, Eisenberg, and Franco, and briefed them. Uh, retain them to basically um, do an investigation on these records as stated on the form. So mm -hmm. this law firm sent out subpoenas to uh, Deloitte LLP, which is a consulting company that Tinubu claims to have worked for, sent out a subpoena to uh, Chicago State University, which Tinubu claims to have graduated from, and to uh, Richard Daly College, also in Chicago, where Tinubu claims to have gone. And I think also to um, uh, Anderson Tax, because Tinubu has also claimed to have worked at, at Arthur Anderson previously before it went defunct. And uh, for the for the benefit of those viewing who don't know what a subpoena is, a subpoena is basically a it's a court document, it's a legal document which is which is issued under the authority of a court, and it compels the recipients of this document to release all information regarding to whatever topic or individual or subject is written on the on the subpoena. So the subpoena that went to um, Deloitte, the response that came, the subpoena went out on September 16th. The response came back September 22. And the response simply said, we don't know this guy. We don't have any records for Ebola Ahmed Tinubu. No employment records for him. He has never worked for us. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the subpoena that went to Anderson Tax, we, we didn't get a response, at least not yet. Uh, the subpoena that went to uh, Chicago State University, we got a voluminous response. Basically, all their records, everything they had to do with the person they had on file called Bola A. Tinubu. And this was where it got very interesting because there is prima facie evidence from the records that they submitted showing that the person they admitted called Bola A. Tinubu is not the person that we know of today as Bola A. Tinubu. First yeah, of people, all, people have names, similar names, probably. Yes, in fact, apart from, so, apart first of all, no, 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 Adam, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to talk to David. What about no, that? Maybe no, somebody has through, the same name. We have to get through the case details. We have to get through the case, case details. Mm. So, on the um, the admissions documents, the 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 um, transcript results from uh, Richard J. Daly, Daly College, which was then known as Southwest College. The person known as Bola A. Tinubu, who applied for admission to Chicago State University, was female. It's written very clearly there, sex, F. So that's one thing. Secondly, the date of birth of this person was 1952. Tinubu's stated date of birth, according to his INEC EC9 form, was 1954. So different dates of birth, different genders. And then the, uh, the you know, possibly the biggest smoking gun of all. The actual degree certificates which Tinubu submitted to INEC versus the degree certificates which the Chicago State University sent in response to the subpoena are two completely different documents. So the, the degree certificate subpoena from Chicago, bear in mind that this is a certificate which is a direct and exact reproduction of the original degree certificate that was issued to Bola A. Tinubu, right? It's an exact reprint of the certificate that was initially issued. So any certificate purporting to be that certificate should look the exact same. 
as that certificate. But Both what do we C1. see? The certificate, yeah. So the certificate submitted to INEC, first of all, the, 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 the logo of the university on that certificate is different to that which Chicago State University sent in response to the subpoena. Different logos, the signatures are different, they're, they're by different people. There are different fields on the form. There are different data points on the form. The font on the form, two completely different font systems. The wording of the, of the degree certificates are different. The, on the so, supposed degree certificates submitted to INEC, there are two grammatical errors. And then so what's what the is goal? INEC saying about this? What, what is INEC saying about this? Hang on. Just hang on. I haven't finished. And then the dates on both certificates are different. So on the one submit on, on the one from Chicago State University, it says that this degree is awarded on the 27th of June 1979. On the one sent to INEC, it says this degree is awarded on the 22nd of June 1979. So clearly, the one submitted to INEC is a forgery. It's not the certificate that was awarded to Bola A. Tinumbu. Now, what makes it worse when you when you drill down further? I don't know how 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 long you spent reading the story. When you do a little, just a, a very small online search, like you literally just search fake Chicago State University certificate on Google. Very basic. This is not an investigation. One inch deep kind of research, you come across a repository on a website called Pinterest. I'm sure you know what Pinterest is. Mm -hmm. And you find a picture repository belonging to a platform called diplomamakers.com. And in that repository, you see a, a template, a template fake certificate for Chicago State University that is an exact replica of that which Tinubu submitted to INEC. The same font, the same grammatical errors in the wording, the same layout, same everything. It's just instead of insert name here, which you see on the template, you see Bola A Tinubu on the one submitted to INEC. And that. So clearly, Bola Tinubu or somebody working for Bola Tinubu went and used the service called uh, 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 diplomamakers.com, which makes fake degree certificates, printed out a, free, a fake degree certificate purported to be from Chicago State University for reasons best known to him, and sent this into INEC. Now you asked, what is INEC doing about this? Um, we've, okay, first of all, it's in court because obviously uh, criminal activity has taken place. Perjury, forgery, these are crimes in Nigeria. So there's that. Secondly, INEC on its own does not have power to do anything. And I'll explain what I mean by that. Now, under the electoral law, the only people who can uh, go to court to try to get Tinubu disqualified as it stands now are fellow contestants. So either a contestant from another party or somebody who contested the APC presidential primaries with him. So a random, a, an ordinary citizen cannot go to court to compel INEC to disqualify him. INEC on its own, apparently does not have the power to verify certificates or to disqualify candidates, only the courts. <laughs>